Welcome to, is it Saturday? It's Saturday, right? It's totally Saturday. Saturday, May 28th, here at the 36th Annual Bull Shooter World Finals. We do join this match uh, partway through the first leg. Uh, I am DJ Sayre, joined by Gordon Dixon. Hey-o! We are your commentating team, coming to you from Chicago, Illinois, at the fabulous Hyatt Regency O'Hare. There we see Chris Grimmel in the double eight to take leg number one. So Abby's spot now leading us out in leg number two. Excited day, uh, exciting day of darts uh, today. We've got uh, some doubles 01 going on for uh, for all these teams. Yeah, our um, double-A brackets are kind of small, um, admittedly, so only eight teams in the ladies' double-A, so we decided to start with that, probably run it out all the way, and then um, we'll come back for uh, another, uh, for the, the men's double-A, sorry. So first time this weekend, we've seen the uh, split scores here in 501, which means we are playing the uh, the always fun freeze rule. So now as we get down to uh, the outs in this, this next leg, we can kind of flesh that out a little bit. Kelly Money Mears on the, uh, the stream straight away this morning. Appreciate everybody joining us. Hopefully you got that notification when we went live. Yeah, go ahead and throw in a uh, like and share. See your friends watching as well. We do have a big announcement today coming at 1.30 Central Time. Um, so you will definitely want to be tuning in then. Um, I know we're pretty excited to have the privilege of getting to announce this. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big announcement. Yeah, it's big, uh, I think not only for, uh, for the organization, but for the sport overall. So we'll just continue to say, uh, teasery things like that, uh, the rest of the morning. 1.30 PM central time. You will want to be tuning in. Abby, the leader on the board right now, averaging a 44.5, trying to run down and take this out. But a bit unlucky with her first two and her third. It's a little bit of an opening here, but all the other ladies almost 200 points behind. Yeah, Chris and Kelly really need a hat trick to even bring this in uh, close. Kelly can make a dent. Her score slacks second. But straightens it out again on the third. So set up shot after the 45 for Abby spot the last time up. Much better this time. Putting in a low ton. Setting up 73. The 
uh, the freeze rule is in play in this one. So for anyone unfamiliar with the freeze rule, it is a player may go out and win only if your partner's score is equal to or lower than the opposing team's combined score. Tie in points wins the game. So because of the uh, 107 there from Chris, really uh, putting some pressure on Jennifer here to have to put in a good score to not freeze her partner, Abby. Desperately needs to find a bull now. And doesn't do it. So if we look at Jennifer's score at 274, we know that Chris is sitting on 148. So 126 would be uh, the difference. So that's what Kelly has to get below. That's a good miss. Oh, not going to happen now. So Abby is able to take out the 73. Triple 19 will leave double 8. This is double out. This is where we do see some of the uh, the players that are a little less experienced on the, the double out side of things kind of struggle with what to shoot at. Um, I would put Abby in that category. So 67 now. 51 would be the right shot. She just took a stab at it. If she stays there. You can tell she's struggling with the math of it. She does set up 32, but as we said, that freeze roll is probably going to get the best of her. Not going to get another look. Yeah, it's not too often that the uh, that the players are playing with with the double out. Um, but just on those off occasions, it's a big benefit to, to actually know your, your finishes. Thought that we we're going to get a little help from, from Chris. So yeah, even now, I mean, Jennifer is essentially going to have to score 30 more points than whatever Kelly scores behind. She's going to need a lot of help. So again, Jennifer at 192 with Chrissy sitting at 80. The difference is 112, so that's what Kelly has to get below. So essentially one bull and then one other dart. It's not a one or a two. Oh, but she's going for the finish. Now needs a bull. Finds it with the third dart. Wow. Made that way more interesting than it probably should have been. Yeah, in that spot, I think uh, probably best to just make sure you get below. Uh, and actually, as I say that, 164 wasn't even a finish because you can't in bowl this out. Tab. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Abby going to bring it down, set up the smallest leave that is still a double out because she was frozen. Chrissy looking at 80. Chrissy going double double. First one's in there, second one high, and third one buries it. So a 2 0 lead now for Mears and Grimmel. Yeah, these ladies are playing three of five. And this is go to go to the queen seat match. Um, we are playing double elimination today. So we uh with an 18 bracket this is the second round for for both of these teams. Big open again there from Abby. Good final dart there from Chrissy to uh, rescue the shot a bit.
What can money mirrors do here? She can follow that big start from Abby. A buck fifty of her own. Tough spot for Spot and Carpenter. Even if they win here. See what you did there? That's a tough spot. <laughs> we do have uh, six total divisions going on right now. We've got the uh, the men's 501, the pro A 501, pro double A 501, uh, and then a women's open, women's A and women's double A as you're seeing now. So we should have lots of darts today. Oh, looks like we had a misregistered bull there from Jen. So she'll correct the dart there. Trying to stay perfect, but misses the first. Happy back on that bullseye. Another hat trick. Yeah, no points for style, but. Five of them there. Two double bulls. Definitely seems like she's dialed in this morning. Yeah, minus the um, the out woes, if you will, in leg number two. Abby probably the, uh, the form player on the board right now. This is what Abby needed. Her partner Jen stepping up, putting in a hat trick to guarantee that she won't be frozen, at least not on her next turn. A lot of times in these scenarios, great shot there by Kelly. Um, playing in the as the second player on each team, you're you're really just thinking about not freezing your partner. It almost becomes a, a race against freezing. You're not playing to win, but you expect your partner, because they get the first crack at it, to uh, to be the one that have the ability to win the game. And there. Abby did have the math worked out correctly. So 89. 70. Could go boldly double 10. Yeah, that's exactly what she does. Great shot. Yeah, great leg again from Spot. Would not put this out past Chris, though. 154 is a finish. There's the first part. Now triple 18 for double top. Oh, but a big turn. What now. A, what a shot from Chrissy Grimmel there. Yeah, leaving 16. Now Jennifer's still under pressure to have to hit a big shot to guarantee that uh that Abby's not frozen. Well, that's five in a row. Did she catch it? No, fifteen. So interesting spot for Kelly. One thirty is a finish, but two bulls will freeze. Once again, Kelly does just enough. So it's 16 and 27 is 43, which is less than the 61. So Abby again, not able to take it out. 
Probably going to put in an 18 and leave two like we saw in the last leg. And Chris looking at double eight for the win to book her team's place in the queen seat match. Guaranteed no less than third place. And there it is. Chrissy Grimmel and Kelly Mears take this one 3-0. Book their place in that queen seat match. We're waiting on the winner of Salt and Pepper and Short Stack in the other uh, the other bracket. They are already in play here. The losers bracket is underway as well. So you can see we've got uh, Johnson, Cullen, and Sontag. Taking on Boyk and Johnson in that uh, losers bracket match, and Johnson and Reed taking on Warmack and Murphy in the losers bracket. We are going to run a commercial, and we will be right back with more darting action from the women's double A here at the 36th annual Bull Shooter World Finals.
We are back. So we're going to get to see the uh, the team that just took an L in the winner's side, now playing on the loser's side. We've got Abby and Jennifer taking on, um, well, uh, apologize, we don't know their first names, but C. Johnson and T. Reed. And it looks like Booyah is going to have the uh, the start here. We mentioned it in their in their loss, but Abby, one of the stronger ones uh, on the board. She starts off with a one fifty. Jennifer, the back end of that uh, that last match, started to find the, the bullseye a little bit more regularly. Only finds one here, but for me, that's, uh, that's the X factor here in this game. Nice low ton follow. And Abby back in that bullseye. Oh, going for the, for the trouble. 17. Nice low ton shots there from Booyaz. Jennifer again finding a bullseye on the full third dart there. And we do have uh, first names. So this is Cynthia throwing here. Um, and her partner is Trina. So we do apologize for that to those ladies. Um, well, it looks like Cynthia may go by Cindy, according to Carl in the chat. And hey to you as well, Mr. Watt. Brandon, we we do have all of the brackets. Uh, um, actually, that's not completely true. We have all of the we have access to all of the women's brackets. Um, so as we start to cover the uh, the women's A, we will uh, we'll take a trip through their their brackets. They're on separate pages, so it's not as easy as just posting one uh, one bracket. Jennifer finding her solitary bull that time on her second dart. Cindy putting in three bulls for a hat trick, taking the lead, but only momentarily as Abby coming up, averaging a 42.22. Not going to be able to finish here. Oh, and a tough first dart keeps her out of the bullseye that entire turn. Only going to score an 11. Trina looking at 259. And it has to be said, uh, Trina and Cindy 
coming off a big win in their last match, uh, eliminating Paula Murphy and Danny Warmack. Yeah, no doubt at the beginning of the day, uh, would have been one of the favorites uh, out of these eight teams. Um, and uh, quickly dispatched in the first round, and then uh, again in the, their first round in the, in the loser's bracket. So that's why we play these out. So double 18 now for Cindy. Oh. Oh, it's weird. 56. She actually went for the bull to leave six. But the uh, the single 20 fallout. But she hits a one to leave 35. So not enough to freeze. Had she hit a single, she would have. So instead, now Abby getting a look at 110. Still isn't out. Needs a triple 20. So that's twice now that I've seen the ladies shoot to leave a bull. I'm wondering if we may have it wrong and they're allowed to bull out. I know in the mixed trips at the regionals, it's double out and they are allowed to bull out. Um, yeah, I apologize for not having that. So no, clearly... So now, in order to keep Abby with the ability to to finish, not going to happen, though. So clear darts here for, for the Booyah ladies. Looking at 15 for double 10 and hits a 10. Now 25. In the 15, leave double five. Oh, and she busted. But Abby is frozen. Unfortunately for Jennifer, this is uh, becoming a theme. Um, I think we're three in a row now, which it does start to weigh on you mentally. And Abby, considering leaving the 20. Up to 18, leave two. Yeah, dead center. Nice safe dart there. But, yeah, going back to the, the Jennifer situation, it you, you start to feel like you're you're the sole reason that uh that the team isn't winning, and, and that can definitely wear on you. Double 12 now for Trina. So take leg number one. So good news for Jennifer. Just one big shot. And she could steal this leg. Triple 19, leave double 19. No, she's going to like to take it down and freeze. So you could go triple 13 to leave six. That would freeze. There's lots of options um, to, to freeze, but you kind of want to set up a double as well. Well, she hit a 14. I, um... I don't think she she thought that through. I think she was looking at the 35 and thought that she had to get below that to freeze, but instead the 35 is coming to the board, so she had to be below 12. So shaping up for uh, some twists and turns here. Yeah, this is one of those rare occasions. If, uh, if Cindy's not able to take this out, three for double one. Oh, and she's going to leave two. So again, now Abby is still frozen. She's going to come up and push the button. Yeah, I was going to say this is one of those rare occasions where uh, you can kind of unfreeze. You don't really see that very often. Typically, when the once somebody's frozen, that's that's kind of all she wrote, unless they take the uh, the match out. Yeah, we always mention the the person who has frozen their partner. Has the opportunity to perhaps take a big check out. Trina going to leave six. So now Jennifer can save the day with just a 31. 15 to leave double eight. Wouldn't this be something? Be a, 
a uh, a celebration here, and she's going to burst her score. So, Madhouse for Cindy. She comes inside. The arm flies up. I think they're yes. asking that uh, Cindy go ahead and punch the board for them. I like this uh, from, from Jennifer. She at least uh, is getting in, in position here to take her shot, and she's going to get one. She's going to leave the two as well. She bursts, so back to six. Can't imagine she's going to change routes. Probably see that 15 come in. Maybe a little safer on the eight. And she buries it. So double trouble for Booyah means that seeing spots is able to, to capture this first leg. So Cindy will lead us out in leg number two. out with a third dart. Now seeing spots is going to be uh, very keen on not uh, coming down to the wire <laughs> like that again. And hopefully that uh, that finish from Jennifer will give her a little bit of confidence. Going through the rest of this match. Jennifer doesn't find a bull. So already that gap begins to to widen. Ton again from spot. So decent standard with the uh, with these ladies for the for the scoring portion. Just a lot of miscues there at the end of that first leg. Consistency for Abby over over the last five legs that we've watched her here on the stream. It's been extremely good. Some struggles on setup shots. 
and finishing it the first time of asking, but she's getting down there. Jennifer, however, continues to struggle on that bullseye, which is really what continues to put them on, in danger in these legs. Cindy now at 250, nearly 100 points behind. Abby looking to take that lead, if only for a moment. Now, 152 is a finish. However, uh, we'll see. Oh. Should see a 19 come in here. Maybe an 11 just to not bust. Because a triple 19 would bust you. Or even a 15 to leave 36. Might have been an 11 or a 19 combined, because typically you <laughs> land right in the middle of the two things you got in your head. Uh, little indecision there. Cindy only finds one. So but frozen. So the one oh five and one eighty six is two ninety one. Jennifer's sitting at two ninety six. We did see uh Jennifer able to come back and take the the win in the last one, but it's gotta be painful for for both Jennifer and Abby to uh to see this continue to happen. Seems to be uh, some decent spirits there between Abby and Jennifer. Bull 36, probably the route. There's the bull. Double 18 for Cindy. Well, she does set up a better out, the double 16. I say better just because of the uh, the math. Thirty two being the uh, the highest double that breaks down the most amount of time. So thirty two. If you had a single, you got sixteen to the eight to the four to the two. At the uh, conclusion of this match, we will have the queen seat match here in our double A ladies division. Uh, team Kelly Mears and Chris Grimmel will be taking on Team Julie Wieger and Lisa Yee. Double 16 now for Cindy. Double 8.
Trina's turn to try to finish this leg. 62, two darts. Okay, look at bull double six. That was the route. Now may look at uh, 16 for double 16. Oh, looking to bring it down even further. She went for the jugular. 40 to leave eight. So now a uh, hat trick for Jennifer and all is well. Not only will she be low enough, but she would have froze with the hat trick. But stranger things have happened. We saw in the last leg. She was able to uh, bring it down and take it out. So here she sets up 66 if she does get another chance. But Cindy looking at double four. There it is, dead center. So we are tied up at one leg apiece. I think a little discussion on if uh, the loser side is two out of three or three out of five. I know the uh, the event program lists this event to uh, to be two out of three. However, we know they were playing three out of five on the winner side. Um, so a lot of times with a smaller bracket such as this, only eight teams, we will extend the format. But we may have kept the two out of three on the the loser side, so we will get a cork here. As Abby will show. Oh, and she shows a good one. A double bull. It's on the bottom, though. Typically, that's a uh, clean dart to ride in on. Trina tries to better it, but lands outside. So, Abby Spot will get us started here in this third and deciding leg. And already back into the groove on that bullseye. Fills it up. Yeah, her, her bull hitting has been pretty uh, spot on. Hey. Hey. Cindy getting in on the action, too. She's going to follow a hat trick. Saving the drama for the last leg. Here's the X factor. Can Jennifer stay straight? Well, is she? Oh, tried to get the, uh, the three in the black shot there. So what a time to come up with a hat trick after struggling so much of the morning here on the on the stream. And Abby only gonna find one, but does have that all important start. Jennifer, once again, with a misregistered dart. Trying to get the okay from Trina to go ahead and correct it. Trina now trailing after only a one bull turn compared to everyone else's hat trick. Abby 
Abby's weakest turn on the uh, scoring prowess has been Jennifer's best. So leveling out. Now Cindy, under similar pressure to what we've seen Abby in, needing to take it out before she gets frozen. And she's going to come away empty-handed too. Oh, Jennifer not going to find a bullseye. Solid low tone there from Abby. Putting herself in a good spot to win this leg. Cindy really needs to follow with at least that much. Just not happening in the back end of this leg for, for Cindy after a, a perfect start. Jennifer there in this one. Came to play in game three. Cindy shaking her head after the low tone. I feel like that's a... Uh, a symptom of the last couple of rounds for her. Knows that she's trailing. And set up the double 11. The rarely used double 11. On the steel tip side of things, the most rarely used double in finishes. In the uh, PDC, anyways. Is that a stat off of uh, that guy from Twitter? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, Acopedia. Yep, just in the, the way that it breaks down. Um, nobody really ever throws to, to leave the double 11. So if you find yourself on 22, it was a mistake. <laughs> I wouldn't so much say that in this <laughs> format just because the 50 bull adds a different wrinkle like that for uh, for Abby. The, the 50 to leave 22, it's kind of hard to argue that shot. Um, but on the still tip side of things with that 72, there's three or four different options you're going to take um, just with the double bull being so small. And there it is. She drills the double 11. So winning in this one, Spot and Carpenter. So as we uh, said, next up on the stream, we will have Kelly Mears and Chris Grimmel taking on Lisa Yee. Help me out. What's the other partner? Julie Weger. Julie Weger. Sorry. Um, the <laughs> Their team name says Short Stack. And uh, um, then S stack for the uh, for the name underneath on the uh, uh, the bracket here, which is up on your screen. So this uh, this lady's double A is winding down already. We're getting to the business end. We're gonna start seeing uh, the big checks come out. If you've enjoyed the coverage today, we uh, we greatly appreciate you having uh, having us on. And uh, head over to spider360.com for all of the latest and greatest in bullshooter swag. If you want to see how the tournaments 
from uh, from this year's tour ended up, you can head over to bullshooter.com and check out uh, pictures and, and recaps of all of the winners from each of the uh, the regionals. In the meantime, we are going to go to a short break as we get that. Oh, looks like uh, Dad's going to pull up the, the women's double a, or single A uh, bracket for us. Yeah, we had a request for it, so not sure who we're looking for in the bracket, but, um, yeah, down to, what is it, the, the top eight in the winner side and the loser side moving along here. So if we uh, we can follow it back to the first round for the name, so it looks like all tips and no shaft is uh, Mary Beth Collins and B Hacker uh, against Twisted Sisters of J Ramos and T Romero. Um, and actually, I'll just scroll this. Uh, one interesting one we see here is uh, Zach Attack, uh, Olivia Zimzak. I, I know I'm saying that wrong every time. But uh, our Ladies Open singles champion yesterday, um, yeah, only 16 years old, taking home the title. So uh, a, a bit of a prodigy there to, to keep an eye on. Uh, we got Murph, uh, Meredith McGee, and Kaylee Beard, Liz Tynan, and Shay Cole. That'll be a good matchup. Some Shut Up Geo. And the Trippin' Bees. So, yeah, that bracket progressing as well. Um, looks like we're, we've got the ladies starting to come to the bullpen. So, yeah, we're not going to go anywhere, actually. Um, but, yeah, we, we will just let the, uh, the ladies warm up. And as soon as we have all four, we will be right back. And then uh, at the conclusion of this one, we should have the Losers Takes Third Place match as well in, in the final to, to follow. And then we'll get into the men's double A, which is a 16-person uh, bracket. So it might time out pretty well. And don't forget, one thirty today, big announcement coming up from uh, from the Bull Shooter desk here. We're, uh, we're extremely pumped to be a part of uh, um, the direction that, uh, that we're going with, uh, with this, these streams. And you do not want to miss... That uh, that one thirty announcement. Stick around. We'll uh, we'll be back with these ladies as soon as they uh, they cork and get started.
and we are back. Looks like the ladies are flipped and ready to go. About to cork it up. Chris, unable to find a bull. A uh, very wayward dart there. So Julie will better that dart. Earn the right to go first. We'll be playing three out of five since we are back on the winner's side. This again for the queen seat in the women's double A. 501 here at the 36th annual Bull Shooter World Finals. Yeah, both of these teams uh, guaranteed at minimum third place. The winner of this match guaranteed no less than second place and will have to be double dipped. The old two scoop ice cream cone in order to be denied the trophy. Lackluster start there from from Julie. And though off on the cork, I was I was gonna say I would be very surprised if we uh if we see uh, misses continue from from Chrissy. But she does only find one. So not taking full advantage of that opening. Jay and I work a lot of tournaments. We see Kelly Money Mears. We know that somebody's getting a check. Yeah, I mean, cash and checks, that's what Kelly does. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, between some of the different soft tip events throughout the country, Kelly just always seems to be in and around the, uh, the championship matches. She always says how how nervous she is, and she doesn't like to be on the stream. Yeah, she she don't want to talk to us afterwards for interviews or nothing. But stop winning, then <laughs> <laughs> make it easy on yourself. Chris struggling a little bit early on. Only one bull through six darts. Nice low ton there from Kelly. Julie unlucky there with her last. One hole out into the one. One good shot here from Chris. We'll get her right back in it. Hasn't been punished to this point. Yeah, good recovery after the first dart. But no one really uh, running away with this leg just yet. Seems to be quite a bit of parity between uh, these four ladies.
Big 79 there for Julie. Yeah, you saw the reaction there from her. Yeah, it doesn't leave a finish. Is he going to follow with one again? So Kelly with the best opportunity here to set up in this round. And she is going to be the first to a double. Question in the chat, uh, if the ladies can bull out. No, they cannot bull out. It is a true double out in the double A. Actually, it's that way for the uh, for the single A as well. Good final dart there for the low ton. Lisa continues to struggle here. So 139. Possibilities may go to the 19 to leave 32. Not going to happen back to the bull to leave 20. And Kelly doing a great job setting up there. Julie is frozen. We may see a double 13, double 12, I believe, was uh, the shot. Yeah, just in case you're just joining us and you're unfamiliar with the freeze rule still up to this point, um, the freeze rule means a player may go out and win only if your partner's score is equal to or lower than the opposing team's combined score. A tie in points still wins the game. We see there from Chrissy that uh, she did not try for that bowl out again. Not uh, not able to in this format. Lisa probably needs to get a little tricky here um, just to give her partner a chance. Should be looking up. Well, she's going to stay there. Even a hat trick there would have still had her partner frozen even on a bust. I think a triple 20 with the last dart and then hope that Kelly Buss would have been the right shot, but probably not going to matter as money puts it dead center. So Mears and Grimmel do take a 1-0 advantage in this race to three. Now Julie Ledger to start us out. Yeah, and although uh, Team Short Stack started that last one as well, this format being uh, loser goes first, really no harm, no foul losing that first leg as they uh, they get the start here in the second to try to tie this match up. So trying to start a little better than she did in the last leg to avoid that freeze rule coming into play again. Thank you. 
You see the uh, sideways look there from from Julie as she's not able to find a bull. Recovery there from Lisa. After floating that first one high, finds a couple of bulls. Money. <laughs> Stepping up, putting in the hat trick. Money me is not going to be denied one of those big checks. She wants the biggest check. Not able to snag the three in the black. There was Julie. But did find a low ton, putting herself in the lead. There's a hat trick. Lady's starting to heat up. Women were waiting a little bit on the uh, the last match to finish, so that they could get hit, get in here in the bullpen and battle it out. And I believe the plan uh, is we will follow this bracket all the way through. So we have the uh, um, the finals of the, or I'm sorry, the semifinals of the losers bracket playing now um the winner of that will face off against the loser of this and then we'll be back for the uh for the finals of this women's double a 501 true double out event here uh this morning we continue to hype it up we're only about an hour away from that 130 announcement Huge announcement. It's huge. It's going to be so important. That was a pretty good impression. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know you had that in you. <laughs> uh, there's a reason I don't always do that. Julie now looking at 86. Bull for double 18. There's the first bit. Ooh, single 18, now double 9. Oh, she misses outside. So Chris now with a chance to steal this one and put her team up 2-0. Yeah, these are these are the big shots in these uh in these moments that can really turn these uh these matches on their head. Oh, and she's not going to get there. So Lisa probably needs to take out this 123. Would not want to give Kelly a shot at the 69 behind. Yeah, you can't just give it be giving money mirrors a shot. There's a bull, seventy three. Triple nineteen leaves double eight. Triple eleven leaves top. Seven leaves sixty six. So back at the bull. Job done for making sure that if Kelly does miss, Julie gets a look and will not be frozen. But Kelly looking at sixty nine. See how she chooses to shoot at this. Seven for double six. Chris is pointing. 
Old double one. Now she's pointing up. You got to change. <laughs> and she sticks it. Oh. The heartbreaker. What a shot there. And that one, that one's even a, a more uh, shoulder crusher for the other team. Because as you kind of hang on to every dart, you're like, oh, I'm going to get it. <sighs> yep. You start to think that you're going to get a look, but no. So Julie will start us out once again. Yeah, that last leg, uh, a great example of why these four ladies are the ones that we're, we're witnessing here in the queen seat. All getting a whack of it at the back end of that uh, that second leg. Looks like Chris had a dart misregister there. She'll have to... Oh, no. They were just tangled up. Lisa heating up, putting in a hat trick start. I can't remember. Uh, we just call her Money Mears every time we see her. Did, is that another renaming that we've done? Did she have a nickname previously? <laughs> All right, let's 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 get this straight. No one has a nickname when they show up unless we've given it to them. <laughs> Because we will name you whatever we want, and we won't veer. Like you, you can ask us and tell us all you want. Like we're kind of stubborn like that. So I hope that she embraces the money because I think money mirrors is well. Like, and honestly, that's the reason I asked because as many times as we talked to her about that, I still don't see a shirt that represents Kelly Money Mears. I know. Like I need some green stamps. I need some. <laughs> I need some dollar signs. Yeah, something. Yeah, she needs to come out looking like the dog from Richie Rich. Dollar, <laughs> money signs all over. <laughs> Perhaps a necklace that spins in okay. some type of a yeah, some type of a fashion with the dollar symbol. Yeah, yeah, with the dollar symbol. Good low tone there by Lisa. Taking the reins for her team in this one. Kelly hot on her heels. Both Chris and Kelly on 249 after six. Julie after that first turn. Kind of trailing in this one. Needs to put it right. Yeah, and it's frustrating. To, to watch because I know how good Julie is. Oh, yeah. And uh, she's just in one of those kind of downward spiral where you continue to press, which makes you miss, which makes you press more, <laughs> which and makes you miss more. And she's not missing by much, so right. she's going to continue to throw through it. A big high ton there from Chris. You see the tempo getting faster for Chris. That's when Chris really gets going. When she starts playing fast and you can see the adrenaline, look out. A nice hat trick there from Lisa. But unfortunately, probably not going to get a shot. Between the way Julie's scoring and the way Chrissy and Kelly are, are bringing this down. A little bit of help there with only one bull from Kelly, but still going to be an ask here. See how Chrissy chooses to do this. May start on that treble 20. 87, 51 for 36. Just misses. So bull for 20. 
Decides to shoot for the trouble 20. Trying to leave the 10. Six bull for double eighteen should stay there. Just leave the double thirteen. Oh, she looked up at the sixty. <laughs> Kelly gonna put in a high ton of her own, leaving thirty two. Like a couple of sharks smelling blood. So 50 now for Chris. There it is. Double 16. Berries for a 3 nil win. For projectile dysfunction, Kelly nope. Mears and Chrissy Grimmel. Nothing dysfunctional about that performance. No, absolutely not. Uh, every every big moment seemed to be uh, where uh, where one or both of those ladies stepped up. But good news is for short stack, Lisa Yee and Julie, they do get another whack. Uh, they'll drop to the losers bracket where they will play the winner of salt and pepper and seeing spots who are still underway and we will bring you that match and then of course that final to follow as soon as it is available we're going to run a commercial we'll be back at the 36th annual bull shooter world finals shortly with gordon and dj
We are back. We've got our loser takes third place match between Salt and Pepper and Short Stack. Salt and Pepper consisting of Mary Brand and Jennifer Pickett. Mary coming to the board now. And Short Stack, we saw losing the Queen Seat match, Julie Wedger and Lisa Yee. Yeah, good win for uh, Salt and Pepper, able to uh, see off seeing spots. Um, we saw the the shots from the sideboard there. Abby Spot and uh, Jennifer Carpenter. Commiserations to them going out in that fourth place spot. Don't forget at the um, the conclusion of the ladies' event, close to one thirty today, um, Central Time, we will be announcing a very big news, a uh, piece of news for for both us and the world of darts. So uh, you'll definitely want to be tuning in um, after the conclusion of this event. Mary putting in a low ton. with a hat trick pulling back to 267 just narrowly pushing ahead of Mary Julie leaving around 150. Seems like both uh, two hole players struggling a bit here. Jennifer going to need to find that bull. Try to get back within touching distance. Yeah, Mary's set up to win this leg, or at least get the first crack at it. Um, although 167, not a finish, you got to believe she'll get a shot beyond that one. But uh, Jennifer running the risk of freezing her on that turn if Lisa can put in a good shot. Going to need to fill it up. So no finish available here from 167. Again, outer ring only for these ladies on the uh, the double finish. Julie, however, could have... Uh, Made some fireworks there with a big 150. <clears throat> Looks 
So the freeze definitely going to come into play now. Getting a single bull turn there from Lisa. But it is enough. Mary cannot finish. Just gonna hit the fifty-one and punch the button. <laughs> yeah, I like it. The the nonchalant just kind of chucked the triple seventeen in there, but obviously disappointed that she doesn't get a look at the out. And the clock is ticking on Julie's turn. Fifteen for double top. It's not gonna get there. She's just gonna set up a double. Jennifer doesn't want this uh freeze can to continue. It's gonna have to bring it down, but probably not enough. See if Mary elects to take a shot. For my money, 100% the wrong shot there from Lisa. To start anywhere but bullseyes. Just going to try to leave it even. Bursts their score. Julie now double 19. She's going to cut it double 16. Ooh, I think she thought that one was in. And buries the third for the first leg. Short stack. Going to race the two with a one on the board. Mary will lead us out again. Oh, unlucky there. Thought that second one was in the pool, but bounced out and registered an eight. So only 30 points scored. Jolie now should be looking to punish. Julie does find two bulls. Again, uh, this is the women's finals of the loser's bracket. The winner of this will head to the finals of this women's double A 501 event. At the beautiful Hyatt Regency, Chicago, Illinois. And after that final, boy, do we have some news for you. Yeah, I would say it's... Uh Pretty big news that you'll not want to miss. And then after the big announcement, we'll move into the men's double A bracket. An action packed day of darts. Looks like we got a question about the freeze rule in the chat, so. I will uh, read it here. The freeze rule means a player may go out and win only if your partner scores equal to or lower than the opposing team's combined score. A tie in points wins the game. Maybe 
This is a foreign player so far in this leg. Ooh, she don't like the placement of that one. Does she switch to a triple? No. She's going to stay on the ball. Yeah, just no conviction in those last two. Yeah, she she probably wanted to switch. Um, hence the hesitation. Once it pops into your head, you probably ought to do it. Because you're going to second guess whether you're shooting the right shot or not. Which always leads to bad results. Jennifer, after struggling in that last one, freezing her partner Mary, putting in a big shot here, 116, taking the lead on the board. First player under 200. I like Lisa's approach there. Seemed like she was getting herself uh, geeked up for that shot. Another low ton there for for Jennifer. Setting herself up nicely here in this must win second leg. Again, because we are on the loser side, this is two out of three. We'll go back to three out of five in that final. Big hat trick from Lisa. Needs a big shot here. Not quite what she was looking for. Only 80 scored. So Jennifer now 84 for the win. To tie this match up 1-1. It's a great start. Going straight for it. Oh, and just on the outside. Just the bullseye, bullseye registered there. Lisa's not frozen. 124. Pretty straightforward out. Couple of bulls and a double 12. And she's getting a look. She's going to settle back in. And drills it to break the hearts of Mary and Jennifer. Sending them home in third place. So short stack, couple of pancakes, moving on to the final. Looks like we, uh, we've we got a couple of them in the background already. Yeah, congratulations to uh, short stack making it back to that final. They will face off against Kelly Mears and Chrissy Grimmel in a uh, best three out of five with the opportunity to double dip 
but it's going to be a big, big ask against our queen seat holders. But as soon as we're able uh, and the, the players are ready to go, you can see there uh, we'll do a slight trophy presentation. And we will be back with that final shortly.
All right, we've got our ladies' finals. The women's double A 501 doubles final. We see Chrissy Grimmel and Kelly Money Mears taking on short stack. Julie Wager and Lisa Yee. And as you can probably tell, it is after 1.30 Central. So following this match, we will have our... Big announcement. Both teams starting out with a couple of bull turns. Lisa following suit as well. So, again, parody between these four women. This is a uh, rematch of our queen seat match, which uh, Kelly and Chrissy did win 3-0. So, be interesting to see how, how short stack reacts uh, in this this matchup this time knowing that they haven't taken a single leg off of them then they're, they're going to need six in order to uh to get this Just looking to put in a big shot here and take control of the leg again. But instead, only going to score 19 points.
Thank you. 